Good morning and welcome to today's pre-recorded service here at All Saints Church in Lightwater. I'm David and whether you're local to Lightwater or from further afield, you're most welcome to join us today. Today of course is Remembrance Sunday, a day to remember those who have lived with and still live with the consequence of conflict and war. And so in the words we use, the prayers we share and the hymns we sing, we stand alongside each other in remembrance. Please do speak out when you see words on the screen and why not sing out in full voice with our hymns together. Let me then offer an opening prayer. Almighty and living God, we thank you that you have drawn us together today. We come before you thanking you for the assurance we have that you are our help and strength in times of trouble. And that whatever we face, you are there to reach out to us. We pray for this Remembrance Sunday, that on this day, we can truly know what others have given for us and what you and your Son, Jesus Christ, have offered to us in hope and love. Be with us this day, we pray. Amen. Let us join together then in our first hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. Well, what is always with us, of course, at Remembrance is the poppy. As we carry out our acts of remembrance this year in many different ways, I'm sure. What remains constant between them all is the presence of the poppy. And it's a sign not only of remembrance, but of hope as well. Remembrance because it reminds us of the fields on which so many lives were lost in conflict. And hope because despite all that happened, the poppies grew again in their thousands. Life renewed, made possible once again. There's nothing more moving for me than the poppy that is attached to the cross. The cross, which is a sign of Christian hope, of God's eternal hope, and a sign of God as our helper as well. We get a glimpse of this even in the opening line of John McRae's famous poem. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, 
between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. So as we gather round what Remembrance Sunday means to each of us today, let's first of all spend a few moments in quiet as we reflect on what's on our hearts. A memory, a person, a gratitude. And let us offer this to God in the quiet we share. Well, Isabella is now going to bring us a poem that helps us in our prayers. Let's hear what Isabella would like to share. Hello, today I'm going to be reading a poem about those who sacrificed their lives in the war. Look at your poppy as that of someone sitting near you if you don't have one. Poppies are bright and cheerful flowers. Give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in the war, remembering all the joy they brought to families and friends and all the good things they did for their home and their country. Then look at the red petals. Red reminds us of danger and harm. Ask God to be close to those who are still facing danger each day, to give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all those who help others. Place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are also fragile and need to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting and those who are sad. Ask God to comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Finally, place a finger in the centre of the poppy. Ask God to help you play your part in working for peace in the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Isabella. Well, as we remember in different ways this year, the Royal British Legion are encouraging us to put a poppy in our window. So how about taking a poppy like this, the outline of one, colouring it in red, putting it in your window and even writing down some words of thanks and hope on it. Maybe we can all add something to remembrance in our communities then this year. Our first reading today continues to turn our attention towards the message of hope that the cross of Christ has for us on Remembrance Sunday. A message of compassion and love for all that is experienced in our lives. And then the promise of new life in Jesus himself as he rose from death and offers us that new life as well. So Judith is going to bring our first reading, which is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Believers who have died. Our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died, so that you will not be sad, as are those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus those who have died believing in him. What we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive on the day the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be a shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then we who are living at that time will be gathered up along with them into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The good news then is that in Jesus Christ is the hope of life. Let us sing together again and take in the words of hope on this day. And we sing in Christ alone. Christ alone, in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fierce 
faces drown in storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comfort. We come then to our second reading, which Judith will bring to us. And these are the words of Jesus, a parable about always being ready for the good news that God has for us, not to lose sight of it and not to ignore it. And once we've heard this reading, Derek will bring his thoughts for today to us. The Parable of the Ten Virgins At that time, the Kingdom of Heaven will be like this. Once there were ten young women who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so they began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the quarry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten young women woke up and trimmed their lamps. 
Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, said the wise ones answered. There is not enough for you and for us. Go to the store and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish ones went off to buy some oil, and while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later, the others arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not. I don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, Watch out then, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 2020 has been a very difficult year for all of us. It started well enough, and then towards the end of March, things began to go haywire as we all went into lockdown. This has meant that relationships have been anything but normal, as we have been unable to see some or all of our family and friends, depending on each individual situation. This year has been compared by some to World War II, but there are several important differences. Perhaps the biggest similarity has been the disruption to family life, with husbands, brothers, sons serving this country in the armed forces, and wives and daughters also serving, but not on the front line. On the other side of the coin, family were there to support one another during the war. Back then, we were not separated by fear of catching some infectious disease or by some government regulations to try and keep a virus under control. During 2020, we had two life-changing events to celebrate and remember, but our celebrations had to be low-key not at all how we would have wanted to celebrate the first of those, which was VE Day. Victory in Europe was hard won, and the Allied troops were pressed to the last. But by May the 8th, Germany had surrendered. Prisoners had been set free from POW camps, and the horrific tales of what we now know as the Holocaust became known. This was indeed a day to celebrate, as people in Brit Great Britain realised that in the not too distant future, families would be united as one once again. However, this was not true for all the fighting forces, as Japan continued to hold out against the odds. They continued to try to expand their influence across Asia. Then on the 15th of August 1945, Japan surrendered, following the dropping of two atomic bombs by the United States on their country. The World War was now at an end, and great was the celebration by people who had lived through it all. Eventually, this Covid epidemic will come to an end, and like the war, who will have claimed a great number of lives worldwide, though hopefully not as many lives as World War II. When it is all over, I wonder how we will celebrate when family and friends will once again be able to mix together, give each other a hug and say how much we have missed each other. For this is what happened after the end of the war, and families were once again reunited. But of course, there were those who didn't make it. Husbands, sons, fathers had lost their lives in the service of their country, and would never be reunited with their families, at least not in this world. Families mourned their passing, and continue to do so down the generations. There were sons who never knew their fathers, and fathers who never knew their children. It's also right and proper that we should re remember those who never came home, who made their ultimate sacrifice, so that the world could be a better place, 
so that peace should become the new normal, a phrase that we hear so much about today. The war changed many things, most of them for the better, and perhaps this COVID-19 epidemic will also change many things. During this pandemic, neighbours have been more attentive to the needs of others, and hopefully this trend will continue as we come to realise that so much of what we thought was important wasn't after all. We all need to remember and learn from our history. Remembrance is an important part of who we are, for it governs our lives, and it's through the act of remembrance that we find our real roots as human beings. It's because we remember Jesus and all he did, for us, for all he did for us, that we can grow as human beings in the right way and not in the wrong way. We can reach out in love to all those around us. We can change our worldly view based priorities for more spiritual ones and serve our fellows in new and rewarding ways. So today, particularly, let us thank God for all those who gave up their lives for the cause of freedom and pray that they will never be forgotten. Amen. Let's pray together. God of peace, we pray for the world. On this Remembrance Sunday, we remember all those who have died in the service of their country and all who mourn. As we honour their courage, and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope now and forever. We pray for those members of our armed forces serving in the world's trouble spots, and we pray for world leaders that they will govern with compassion and that your peace and justice will prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering as a result of war or famine, for those who are homeless or refugees. And we especially pray for all affected by the Turkish earthquake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth and justice, we pray for the United States as they continue to work out the result of their presidential election. We pray for democracy to be upheld and for a just outcome, that the incoming president can build trust and healing once again in that divided country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we pray for our local area during this new lockdown, for volunteers with Lightwater Connected helping residents who may be isolated. Keep us aware of our neighbours and their needs. We pray for local businesses who may have to close, for their family situations. And we pray that these new regulations will reduce new infections and help our hospitals to treat patients safely and effectively. We pray too for care homes and all those who may be separated from their loved ones, wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for all who are suffering in mind, body or spirit, especially those known to us. Give them peace and be alongside them, letting them know that you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. We ask these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us then offer the peace to one another. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We spend a few moments now reflecting on all that today means to us. Let's gather around that eternal truth of God being there for us and being our hope as we listen to God be in my head. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to everyone who has contributed to the service in any way. It's most appreciated and especially to the technical team for all your creative input. Before we sing our final hymn, just a few notices. First of all, to confirm that due to government guidelines, we are unable to hold services in church or the church hall on Sundays or on Wednesdays as we would normally do. And of course, we will keep you posted as to when this is next possible. The good news is, though, that the church is open for individual prayer. So when you're out on your walk and exercise each day, why not pop into the church and enjoy its rest and the peace in here? And the Archbishop is encouraging us to pray each day during November at six o'clock for our nation at this time. Just like we used to stand on the doorstep to applaud the NHS so we can pray for the nation at six o'clock each day. On the Church of England website, there is a prayer for each day and also a leaflet to download. So please do go there to help you in your prayer. Thank you then once again for being with us for our Remembrance Sunday service. We stand alongside those who have lived with and still live with the consequence of conflict and war. And we also keep in mind the hope of the cross. So let us join together one final time today in singing a hymn, O God Beyond All Praising.
blessing to finish our remembrance service for today. God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the nations of the world unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>